Here's my epistemic justice person coming. How are you? I beg your pardon? Is it setting the timer? Only if you have time to talk. Okay, it's got four minutes. Four minutes? Are you going to hold me to four? Because it's such a complicated topic. It is. These are four-minute segments. I know. But usually we hit the four minutes and the person wants to keep talking. Are you okay if I continue to record? Sure. Okay. Here we go. There we go. I appreciate you coming back. Yeah. If I remember right, we were kind of in the midst of a conversation. We were getting into equality epistemic justice, mm -hmm. this idea of um, if a marginalized group thinks that something is true, if it's their story, then it's true, perhaps. We can get into that. And then somebody came up and, and found our conversation interesting and yeah. kind of threw it off. And then the timer beeped and then you had to run. Yeah. So I guess we can, can we, can we pick up that same topic first? Are yeah. you okay if we do that? Yeah. Uh, you had mentioned equity as a possible topic, and then in order to explain it, we needed to talk about epistemic justice. Mm -hmm. well, well, because equity is a broad, um, a broad umbrella, so we can apply equity to epistemic justice, equity to professionalism, equity to um, access to resources. You know, so I specifically mm. talked about it in um, an epistemic justice. Okay. I think the epistemic justice topic mm -hmm. caught my attention more, perhaps, than even the equity part of it. Mm -hmm. Although maybe maybe it, we can't even discuss the epistemic justice part without the equity. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Well, epistemic justice would be equity, but it's there's a clash of epistemology. So I don't I don't see how we could ever reconcile the two. Because if if I make the statement, the scientific method is not of itself a pseudoscience. If you find that statement to be like, whoa, like, whoa, that makes me uncomfortable. You are operating from within the dominant epistemological standpoint where hmm. other native and indigenous epistemologies, ways of learning and thinking and, and understanding have their own scientific methods as we would call them. But we completely... Different methods. Yes. Um, Do these different methods bring us all to the same factual truth of the matter? Well, when it comes to... This is, this is the problem with um, education as we know it. Because what we have been fed and given in our K through 12 is this history of the founding fathers and this 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 white history so now that groups um, African Americans Mexican Americans Native Americans are fighting for their own studies their own accounts of history as they see it happen as they um, experienced it now we want to change the language to this is a perspective this is this oh. is another person's perspective. So hmm. we like to, we scholars, white scholars, like to play with language in this way that almost ap appropriates what someone else said and uses it to do the same thing but call it something else. So for instance, um, the 45th president, um, went through a time where, oh, we're not, it's not a border wall. We're looking at slats. Okay. He, he, was, he was like, don't call it a border. We're not looking at a wall that's old. We're, they're, we're looking at steel slats as if it wasn't the same mm. end. Okay. So, so now it's like they change perspective. So where I, I, I am an advocate for epistemic justice, specifically for Mexican American studies. Um, and it's about telling our story and as we experienced it, as we know of our land where before Texas was Mexico, even before that, because there were this specific region, the borderlands, is a twice colonized hmm. 
place. We were colonized by the Spaniards and okay. then by the Europeans. So to stay focused on epistemic justice or this idea of potentially different methods, mm -hmm. there's uh, what one might say is like the current prevailing scientific method that that may or may not be argued as sort of originating from white people. Is, am I understanding that right? Well, and then there's another, can I just finish this one thing? And then I think there, you, you, might, you might argue or other people might argue that there are different methodologies that people will use to come to conclusions besides that one. Mm -hmm. Is it your position that they're on equal footing for bringing us to the truth? Or is one, is one better than the other, more reliable perhaps? I, I take issue with the word truth. Mm. Yeah. Can yeah. we get into that? Sure. What definition are you using for the word truth, and then why are you having issue with it? So what's your definition of the word truth? Well, my definition, I don't think I would use the word true. Like, I don't like using the word normal. Um, I, I really try to operate from a non-binary understanding, whereas hmm. the majority of people do. That It's a yes or a no. It's a... It's a normal, abnormal. Listen to, listen to the language people use. It's all rooted in a binary. And that's the thing. Within Native and, and Indigenous epistemological stand, uh, understandings, mm -hmm. their binaries don't exist. They don't push you into boxes. You are dual. Mm. Um, you are a duality. So Could you come in the shade just a tad so I get you in the shot? Mm -hmm. I want to make sure you're in the shot. Let me understand. So I, I carry this box of candies around when this idea of truth comes up mm -hmm. and some people do view it as binary and some people view it as something else. Mm -hmm. And my question to you is, would a Native American or anyone else, would you perhaps even look at this box of candies and say that it can both be even an odd number of total pieces simultaneously? Well, How would you go about solving that question, whether the total number of pieces in this box is either even or odd. Would you agree that it's one or the other? I, no, I wouldn't. Because, again, you're operating from different understandings. You can count them, we can count them as we know numbers to exist uh -huh. in a sequence. Yeah. We could count those and say there are definitely 35 pieces in there. Okay, great. The, in, the Aztecs had the Nepal one scene scene which is an entirely different, entirely different understanding of how numbers work that would go, it's almost like too advanced. To, I don't even get it. You know, hmm. there is this teacher um, at high school um, who she doesn't just bring in Mexican-American studies specifically um, for one lesson plan she operates her entire curriculum based on um maya maya yeah maya um, understandings of mathematics to bring this to your definition of the word truth then how would you how would you look at this box of candies it's understandings of experience it's understandings um yeah, it's understandings of experiences from perspectives. Like, it's not, is it true that the Europeans conquered this land? Yes. Is it true that they, they came into Mexican territory and... Uh, completely disregarded a treaty yes those things are true but that's not the truth that we're taught in school so you can ask any you know anyone who's not into these critical studies what we know as truth is not true it was it's their narrative okay it's narrative their narrative is your position that a person's narrative particularly if they're from a a, a disenfranchised tribe or community of people that the narrative supersedes truth yes or is narrative truth or is narrative better than truth so does it supersede it narrative is very important to upholding 
colonial legacies narrative is important we celebrate the alamo you can have your rings spend that your class rings spend the night in the alamo for some special ceremony because mm -hmm. the the colonial narrative that we have been fed is that davy crockett and all of them and the, the whole you know alamo thing now when indigenous students come to town you, i don't think that they want their class rings spending the night in this very mm -hmm. colonial structure but it's okay. important for this city to uphold that narrative of heroic people of the Alamo. With regards to this idea of a narrative and then truth, rather than getting hung up on specific examples, I, I, if it's okay, I'd like to keep it really simple. If there was a narrative, if there was a, an Indian narrative that says, whenever you happen to approach a man with a box of candies, the total number of pieces will always be even. If, I know it's a silly narrative. Mm -hmm. If there was a narrative like that, would it mean that it was factually true that whenever you approached a person, a man, and he had a box of candies, the total number of pieces would be even? Would it make it factually true because of the narrative? But I don't, I don't like truths. It, it, would, it would depend on what epistemological standpoint you're coming from. <laughs> If that's we, where we have never, ever, ever have found um, common ground. You know, hmm. when when Montezuma's men were approached by whatever uh, Hernan Cortez, when he hands Montezuma's men a Bible, and Montezuma feels he's king, like, what is this? This means nothing to me. And Hernan Cortez is like, oh my God, it's the Holy Bible. He disregarded because he didn't understand the meaning of in which the Bible meant to him, just as mm. Hernan Cortes didn't understand the meaning of coming to a king and handing him a book. Okay, that's a good example. So let's say, yeah, we have two competing holy books, or let's say we even have two competing narratives. They are, they're competing epistemologies. Yes. So if we had a competing epistemology for the total number of pieces in this container, and there's a narrative that says whenever you encounter a man and he's holding a box of candies, mm -hmm. the total number of pieces will be even. And then there's a competing narrative that says the total number of pieces will be odd. How do we resolve the... Do you even see that as a conflict? Would one of the tribes be correct and one of the tribes be incorrect? Mm, I don't know, because there's, there's many different nations, you know, like it's not... Which, one, which narrative should win the day? I don't know if either one should win. They both win. You know, they're both systems of understanding. Would they both be factually true in reality it about the situation? For, it would be up to the whoever wants to stand as the authenticator of facts. It would mm. be for that person to decide. Is it conceivable that a representative of each tribe could sit down and count the total number of pieces to see which narrative corresponds with reality? They they have different realities. They have di they come from different. They have different narratives. Yet, if we sat them down, they would probably count the total number of pieces the same. I would think. It depends on how they're conceptualizing what equals one. Mm -hmm. Does, does mm -hmm. this piece equal one, two, three, four? Right. Or is this one right. because it's a whole? They might bind them together as twins, and that's one piece. But we could even maybe look at it a different way. Which pieces block the same amount of light if we were to shine a light behind it or if we were to put them onto a scale or something? We could probably come up with some standard with which to compare the narratives to see which one reflects the reality of the situation. Well, we have come up with that, and it's called the numbers as we know them today. Mm. Mm. So my best friend has French toast waiting for me, so I'll be looking for segment three. Would, would you like your second segment? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and just so you know, I don't want you to feel obligated to be coming back for these. <laughs> just so you know, but uh, I really enjoyed the talk. Collection. <laughs> okay, right, take it easy. Bye bye. And she's off. Yeah. Holy moly!